Barca's future in Europe is in danger. Three Chelsea players could be on the move. Villa Eye, a Villarreal star, and a transfer roundup all coming up on today's One Football Daily News. As I'm your host, Angelina Kelly, let's get into it. So it was another great night of Champions League football last night, with some teams doing enough to qualify for the next round of the competition already with one game to spare, and some other teams not doing enough and actually leaving their future in the competition in jeopardy. And one of these teams is actually Barcelona. They were held to a goalless draw at home last night against Benfica. And whilst Xavi's team did have a couple of chances, it was actually Benfica that did seem to get closer to getting a goal. But luckily for Barcelona, it simply was not their night. So what this now means for Barcelona is that they now head to Bavaria to face Bayern Munich in their final fixture in the group. If they lose that game and Benfica manage to win their game against Dynamo Kiev, it would mean that they were basically out of the competition in the group stage. And speaking of Bayern Munich, they got themselves a 2-1 victory over Dynamo Kiev and of course the man of the night was Robert Lewandowski who managed to score himself a stunning bicycle kick in the snow with his bootlaces undone. I mean, is there anything this man cannot do? He is now the first player to score in nine consecutive Champions League games twice, having done it also back in August of 2020. Just when you think you've seen it all from Lewandowski, he pulls a goal like that out of the bag. And of course, Bayern Munich have kept their 100% record in Group E. Meanwhile, in one of the other groups, Chelsea, who have qualified for the round of 16, thrashed Juventus four goals to nil. And it was a great night for Trevor Shaloba, who justified his manager's decision to give him his first European start for the Blues as he managed to score the opener. For Juventus, all is not completely lost as they are still level on points with Chelsea and depending what happens in the final game of the group stage, they could actually still finish the group top. But they were simply outsmarted by a very impressive Chelsea team that were once again defensively strong. Since Thomas Tuchel's arrival, Chelsea have only conceded 24 goals in 50 appearances, a record for a manager at a British club. And what last night demonstrated is that Chelsea are still 100% in the race to retain this Champions League trophy. In Group F, it was Michael Carrick at the helm for Manchester United and luckily for him, they managed to get a victory over Villarreal and they have now qualified for the next round of the competition. And you get it, it was Cristiano Ronaldo that once again came to their rescue as he got the opening goal. Donny van der Beek was actually given a start by Carrick, which was a bit of a surprise for some Man United fans, but it was a great night for Jadon Sancho who scored his first Manchester United goal. Let's face it, the performance wasn't great from United, but I think that it is definitely a boost in morale, especially since they are facing Chelsea in the Premier League at the weekend. Elsewhere, and Atalanta had to rely on Luis Muriel to get them a crucial point in their 3-3 draw with Young Boys. Sevilla got an important win over Wolfsburg that gives them a fighting chance to finish in the top two. Elsewhere and Zenit managed to secure themselves Europa League football and Lille managed to stay at the top of their group with a narrow win over Salzburg. Now despite the rumoured financial predicaments that Barcelona find themselves in, according to ESPN they could still be interested in signing three Chelsea players. So the first one is Christian Pulisic. He is reportedly very frustrated at basically not being able to prove his worth with the Blues because he's not getting enough playing time. At the end of the day when you look at that Chelsea roster there are so many talented players and unfortunately it is hard for all of the players to get enough playing time. His agent has seemingly spoken to Roman Abramovich already and said that the player would like to depart but Chelsea reportedly do not want him to go to another Premier League team which is where Barcelona come into the mix. However the price tag on Pulisic's head is seemingly 50 million euros. Not too sure if that's something that Barcelona can do but they are reportedly still interested in trying to see if they could get the player. There are reports that Barcelona may try to negotiate a compulsory transfer in 2023 or that they may try try and add a player to the deal, such as Felipe Coutinho. But if we're being completely honest, I don't think that Chelsea need Felipe Coutinho, so I'm not too sure if I could see that one happening. Now, before we go to the other two Chelsea players, of course, Barcelona have been linked with Raheem Sterling, but reportedly, if they do not manage to get the Manchester City player, then they are considering two Chelsea backups in Timo Werner and Hakim Ziyech. Reportedly, Barcelona's main motivation is to try and talk to players that are not getting the game time that they 100% want at their current club. And according to sources with ESPN, they have already spoken to Chelsea about the two players and their availability. At the end of the day, when you look at any three of these Chelsea players, and of course, when you look at Raheem Sterling, I think that any one of those players could add something really positive to this Barcelona team. However, the powers that be at the club have already said this week that they probably won't be able to sign any players in the next transfer window, despite the reports that Xavi
Xavi is desperate to try and add some more quality to this team. Therefore, the only option for Barcelona is to potentially usher a few players to the exit door and there is a fresh report now that they are looking to try and terminate Samuel Umtiti's contract as of course he is on reportedly over €200,000 a week. He's not going to be in Xavi's future plans so perhaps we could see him heading for the exit door. When you think of Pau Torres at Villarreal, you think about all the different transfer rumours that the defender was linked with, moved to Manchester United, to Chelsea, even to Real Madrid, but I bet you wouldn't have guessed a potential move to Aston Villa, as according to some reports, Steven Gerrard is not just looking at bringing some Rangers players to the Premier League, but he's also considering a move for the Villarreal defender. Now, although the club have the likes of Tyrone Mings, Ezri Konza, Axel to and Xavi on loan, etc. in their defence, Gerrard reportedly believes that not all of his defenders are performing to the best of their ability, and he is seemingly on the hunt to bring in a new defender, and he has identified Torres as his main candidate. Now, let's face it, Torres is not going to be cheap. His price tag is reportedly around 50 million euros. And although some people are saying, well, of course, Villa did sell Jack Grealish to Manchester City, they got a reported 100 million pounds, they have already invested a lot of that money with the likes of Danny Ings, Leon Bailey, Emiliano Buendia, etc. So I'm not too sure if Aston Villa would 100% have the funds to bring in the star. Steven Gerrard's team on paper does have a lot of quality and it makes sense for them to want to invest in their defence. As with some of the names that I've mentioned, they have already invested in their attack. However, Aston Villa fans, I'm sorry to have to burst your bubble, but I don't think realistically I can see Torres making the move. He has given an interview in The Guardian recently talking about a potential move to Spurs that could have happened in the summer, that could have actually quadrupled his wages. However, Torres is from Villarreal, playing for Villarreal. They've won the Europa League, they're in the Champions League, and he personally basically said that he believed that that was something that he was more interested in, playing for his hometown club versus making a big money move. And at the end of the day, if Villarreal are already in the mix in Europe, no disrespect to Aston Villa, but they're not there just yet. So I think it would take a little bit of doing it in order to get Torres to depart from the club that he clearly loves so much and are already offering him quite a few things. However, they've not been doing too well in La Liga recently, so maybe he could be tempted depending on what happens with the rest of Aston Villa's season. But personally, for now, I don't think I can see it happening. And now we have a transfer roundup. This is where I take a look at some of the other news and transfers going on in the footballing world. And first up, according to the Guardian, Manchester United have inquired about ex-Barcelona manager Ernesto Valverde as their interim manager. Mundo Deportivo report that Real Madrid are interested in Manchester City loanee Pedro Porro, who is on a two-season loan spell at Portuguese side Sporting. Newcastle United reportedly hopes to convince Bayern Munich's head of recruitment Laurent Brousset to join the club. And according to journalist Ekrem Conner, Ross Barkley has had a price tag put on his head by Chelsea of £40 million, with the likes of Newcastle United, Leeds and Burnley all interested. So that's it for today's One Football Daily News. As always, thanks for watching. Check out all the other content. And until next time, I will see you all later.